we return to the land of friendship. Magic gathers as the Decepticons' forces invade once again. However, the only magical thing on this podcast is the ending, when you don't have to listen to the host anymore. Well, if you are going to stay a while, might as well tune in to the show. But I suggest turning the volume all the way down. Welcome to another special segment of Kilobytes Corner, where I cover the comics Onyx Prime is too busy to review. Today, I'm here with a special guest, Lapis. Hello! Thank you for being here today. Yeah, no problem. I'm stoked to be here again. (laughs) That's awesome. That's awesome. But because today, we are covering the IDW Transformers, The Magic of Cybertron. And as always, spoiler warning. So if you haven't read it already, I highly recommend you go and read it and then come back and listen to the podcast. We also have a goal to reach 500 subscribers. We will be holding a brand new kind of giveaway we've never done before. So make sure to click that subscribe button and tell your friends it's a good time. Now, onward with the comic. It's time for some fun facts and trivia. There are four comics that we're going to be reading this time. The first one was released April 28th, 2021. And the last one was released July 21st of the same year. The writers are James Asmus, Ian Flynn, and Sam Maggs. Art by Casey Collar, Jack Lawrence, Priscilla Tomontano, Tony Flex, Beth McGuire Smith, and Adam Bryce Thomas. But this time, they are joined by fellow My Little Pony comic artist Trish Forstner. Now, time for some trivia. Although the space bridge in the Transformation is Magic was based on the receiving tower from the Generation 1 cartoon, episode Transport to Oblivion, and a roll for it, the new space bridge is a ring-shaped Stargate-style portal based on how the 2005 IDW continuity depicted the technology. King Samba materializes with a cry of destiny, you cannot destroy my destiny, a phrase famously uttered by a dying Unicron in the Transformers the movie. As Samba reconstitutes his cloud of black magic briefly resolves itself into a horn shaped with wings, allowing an ob- oblivious sludge to set up an inevitable unicorn slash unicron pawn. And finally, all hail Sombra cries a brainwashed Megatron, evoking the oft slung Decepticon battle cry. Lapis, do you mind giving us a short summary of these comics? Yeah, absolutely. All right, so. The Decepticons try to steal the magic of the ponies that they had left back in Equestria. However, they end up bringing back an ancient evil known as Sombra that takes control of them instead. RC and Greenlight help out their new pony friends in the first issue. Next up, we have Rainbow Dash teaming up with the Seekers to fight back against the mind-controlled army, while Applejack faces off against Wild Wheel. Next, we have Soundwave working together with Vinyl to free themselves and a group of kids from some rubble. And then we have Ratchet, Rarity, and Knockout teaming up to free bots from their mind control. Finally, Spike works together with the Dinobots to bring down a mind-controlled Superion. And the Autobots, Decepticons, and Ponies all band together to free their friends and save the planet. Awesome, awesome. Thank you so much. We would also like to give a special shout out to our patrons. Thank you so much for helping out the podcast, uh, VR Matrix. Thank you again so much, so much. It's always appreciated. Lapis, are you ready to begin? Oh, and as always, this information has been taken from the wiki. I can't forget that. So, (laughs) (laughs) our first story is called The Magic of Cybertron. We start off on Cybertron as the Decepticons prepared a space bridge in order to capture magical artifacts the ponies possess but when the ponies strike back in order to recover the artifacts an ancient evil is released unicron oops i mean the evil unicorn king sombra any fun scenes that you liked from this issue you know what there were a couple um first off i was a big fan of the fact that they had a lot of prime characters and designs that was pretty exciting so, for example, I really liked the fact that they had Transformers Prime design for Breakdown in there instead of using, like, his G1 counterpart. Because most of the bots that we saw in the the last 
four issues of the, the Pony comics. They were more G1 based, uh, but this breakdown was, was definitely Transformers Prime. So it was pretty cool to see. And then I also just, I liked the fact that we got to see Shadow Striker and Arachnid as well, because I mean, Arachnid is a Transformers Prime character and Shadow Striker is just, she's not very common. So it was pretty exciting. Yeah, no, I like that they're bringing a lot of the different continuities and, and like art styles from the different shows into mm-hmm. the the comics as well. Because Shadow Striker and the uh, Aragnid is from Prime, but Shadow Striker is from Cyberverse. Mm-hmm. And they definitely have that art style. I thought it was fun. I do like the little nod to Optimus and Shockwave uh, possibly knowing each other. Uh, this is more based on uh, the 2005, I'm assuming. I don't think they're doing the same plotline for 2019. And again, these is these, these are their own separate continuity. But I think that's a little nod of them knowing the, uh, like each other in the past before Shockwave uh, became yeah. the, the evil scientist of the Decepticons. So I yeah, thought that was pretty Shockwave. cool. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I thought that was pretty cool. And I really love the beginning of it when we see Rumble reading... Uh, the comics and that, that was, was great <laughs> breakdown is like what are you reading and, and then he's like oh i'm just reading some some comics i got from our punny friends and so like he then like screams up breakdown breaks down it's like okay okay when you're done I'm, I'm i can read them okay it's fine <laughs> so it was great yeah that was pretty good i also was a big fan of when they the decepticons first kind of started opening the portals and getting the ponies into the into cybertron when Pinkie Pie came through the portal and went up to one of the Decepticons and was like, oh my gosh, by the way, I love your matching cutie marks referring to like their <laughs> symbols. I thought that was really funny. Yeah, that was so good. It was mm-hmm. very cute. I do like King Sombra's design. I think it's very really cool as well. So. Oh, yeah, yeah. He was a villain in the show. I don't know too much about him because he was like from a point where I wasn't watching it. Uh, but I, I think he was in the most recent movie that came out for the show. Oh, I see, I see. Well, that's mm-hmm. cool. That's cool. Yeah. Shall we move on? Uh, I did want to just mention, because I think it's the... Let me double check here. Hold on. I want to make sure this is the right... Yeah, okay. The RC and Greenlight are both in this issue, and... The, um, gay. Yeah, they're, yeah that, that's going to be our second story. It's called A Real Mother. Uh, let me summarize it and we can go oh, on yes, that. Oh, yes, 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 yes. Yeah, so uh, we follow Holiday and Lofty, uh, Scooter Lou's aunts, as they search for their missing niece. Uh, but they do run into RC and Greenlight, who decide to help them. But suddenly, a mind-controlled kill master shows up. Uh, and you may continue with your thought about RC and Greenlight. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I... I like the fact that Scootaloo has two gay cool aunts and then Greenlight and RC were like, hey, we're also gay. And now everybody's gay. Are they are, are they all cool aunt, aunts? Is that uh yeah, that dude. RC <laughs> RC would make a sick aunt. Are you kidding me? Yeah. I want her to be my aunt. Yeah, I think she's everybody's, especially uh Rat Trap, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, my great aunt <laughs> RC. Uh, <laughs> I think about that a lot. Yeah. I do like seeing Killmaster uh, again in the comics. Uh, he was in the IDW 2005. He was World's mm-hmm. Nemesis. So it was fun seeing him again. And uh, I do like that RC says that the real name is Murder King. Uh, it, it, the aunts are like, that's a little bit on the snout, but okay. <laughs> so I thought that was pretty funny. Yeah, I'm just, I'm a really big fan of RC's characterization in this series. I, I do really like that. It's pretty. It's pretty good. <laughs> yeah, I, I like the upbeat attitude for us. You know that because uh, in the 2005 continuity, she's more of a kill, kill, kill. Yeah, <laughs> this one seems there's... a little bit more like let's hang out. Yeah, I, I, there's so many different personality versions of RC because from continuity con- to different continuity, they change her. So like G1, I mean. She was eh for me. I don't like that they were trying to make the only female Transformer into, like, the mother figure or whatever. I wasn't a fan of that. But I like RC. And then Transformers Prime was like, hey, here is this super kick-butt blue motorcycle. Love her. However, I also just, I really like the the friendly, outgoing, 
Like, I'm here to keep everybody safe version of RC that's in these comics. I think it's really cute, and I like that. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. For sure. Uh, I do want to mention that at the end, they do find Skidaloo, and Skidaloo's hanging out with Hot Rod. Or, yeah, yeah. Hot Rod. Hot Shot from the uh, Energon series. Uh, one of the mini cons from Armada. I forgot their name. Uh, I should remember this because I love Armada, but uh, it's the it's the little moped uh, mini con, and Scootaloo mm-hmm. is wearing a Spike inspired outfit. Yes, I, I liked cool. that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and in that same panel, I don't know if you notice when all the aunts notice uh, all the kids coming back, the Autobot symbol on R- RC's chest also has their mouth open, like oh, it's like surprised. <laughs> so I, I really that cool. okay. That was something that I think more than meets the eye kind of started. Now I don't quote me; I could be wrong, but I just I really like when the symbols reflect the emotion on the face. I think it's really cool. <laughs> yeah, they, they yeah when they react. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I I I didn't notice. I got must must read those again, but. I just noticed it, and I thought it was a pretty cool detail. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it was something that I noticed back when I was reading More Than Meets the Eye and Lost. I don't know if it's so much in Lost Light, but I remember it in More Than Meets the Eye for sure. I see, I see. Are you ready to move on? I am. Our next story is called Stunt Flying. We follow Rainbow Dash and the original Seekers as they try to work together and capture rogue Autobots and Decepticons who are under the control of King Sombra. I really like... Uh, the banter between Rainbow Dash and Starscream. Yes. Uh, Starscream is reminded of his fail in the previous issues when he got defeated by uh, his own cape, which mm-hmm. I think was a wonderful touch. <laughs> yep, yep, that's great. great. I really like I, it. I just really liked the the weird like semi friendship with Starscream and Rainbow Dash. I liked their competitive nature kind of mashing together, but I was also a big fan. I think it was Skywarp who was like, hey guys, maybe we shouldn't kill all of these bots because what kind of an army are we going to have if everybody's dead? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I do like the designs of the of Rainbow Dash's, uh, I think they're like acrobatic ponies. If I yeah, so I can't quite remember their name right now, the group name, but... Yeah, they do, like, stunt stuff in the show, and it was, like, Rainbow Dash's dream for most of the show to join them. The Wonderbolts, that's what they're called. The Wonderbolts, I see. Yeah. Yeah. I, I like the the designs and everything like that. And I especially like the ending where Starscream is giving his big speech and saying that soon everybody will praise King Starscream, but then Skywarp and Thundercracker are hip, hip, hooray, Rainbow Dash, you saved yeah. the day. Starscream's <laughs> all kind of like, what? <laughs> Yeah, that was pretty good. I liked that. It was great. Is there anything else you would like to add or shall we move on? I am good to move on. Okay. Our next story is called One Trick Pony, where Applejack finds herself wandering the desert trying to get home, but she suddenly meets a robot in a poncho, neither of which are allowing each other to pass. So there's only one solution to this problem, and that is a standoff. Who will win? You want to take this one because i know you like the the poncho robot (laughs) the poncho robot yeah man that's wild wheel from i believe it was transformers cyberverse is when he first appeared and that was a pretty cool addition to be honest i saw him and i immediately like i had to do a second take because uh he (laughs) He looks very much like uh, one of my characters that I've designed for our D and D, and I, as you know, I bought the figure of Wild Wheel. You have him because I want him <laughs> to look like my D and D character. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. But I, I did like to actually get to see him. I thought that was a really cool addition. Like I said earlier, I really like the fact that they're using characters from the different series. So yeah. I think I thought that was pretty fun. Yeah, I thought it was a pretty fun interaction. I like the the cable uh, little um, yeah the whip devils the the dust devils that I think is what they mm-hmm. call them. I thought that was pretty funny. Just seeing cables in the desert. <laughs> oh yeah 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 yeah. That was pretty and, good. Uh, I like the battle because you're expecting Wild Ride to have a gun as well, but uh, Applejack only has a, a rope. But they don't both have whips and they just whip it out, which is pretty cool. <laughs> yep. Yep. 
I also, I need you to know that I got another jump scare while reading this because Quick Strike from Beast Wars makes an appearance. Yes. He was, yeah, he was the one that um, supposedly got his butt kicked by a wild wheel earlier before Applejack appeared. And he was just yes. there. No, I like I like those references. I, I saw him and I'm like, ah, I know who you are. I, I know you're from Beast Wars. I don't remember the name, but I know I knew they were from Beast Wars. So I like all the little cameos we're, we're seeing throughout these issues. Yeah, me too. I was a big fan of just quick. I, I saw Quick Strike and I'm like, help the o, the OG cowboy. <laughs> <laughs> I think that might be uh, passing the torch and letting everybody know that Wild Wheel is now the, the real cowboy. Dang, you know, Quick Strike would never let that happen. Just saying, he would throw <laughs> hands. Well, we just saw uh, Quick Strike uh, get defeated. Yeah, poor guy. But um, you know, you know how it is. <laughs> On this, the same line of getting their butts kicked, the fact that Wild Wheel jumped in at the end there and saved Applejack was uh, unexpected. But I, I liked their friendship and how when they walked away, Applejack was like, we can get matching hats. <laughs> yes, it was very cute. I really liked it. <laughs> yeah. I really liked it. Uh, so moving on to our next story, it's called Sick Beats. Octavia and Vinyl Scratch are trying to find a solution to King Sombra's mind control. But before they could do anything, Soundwave attacks, but they get trapped underneath rubble. Uh, I really like this one. Uh, it, I don't, it was fun. It was entertaining because it was all about music, right? You have these two ponies that uh, one is a DJ and the other one, I think it's a music instructor. Mm-hmm. If I'm not mistaken, because they meet all the little uh, all, all the little kids that would go to the school, and so they're all they were all talk, talking that they were going to go to their version of Coachella, which is called uh, Cult Cella, and okay. they suddenly got teleported to Cybertron, and and then suddenly Soundwave attacks, and so they all have to work together to free each other, and by doing that, they end up uh, pimping up Soundwave's chest <laughs> to have a lot of speakers <laughs> yep. and they all play music and that's how they escape which I thought it was uh the perfect way oh yeah absolutely and there was this one specific scene where the, the Soundwave like <laughs> he like looked at one of the kids and was like do not mock me buffalo and the kid was like I'm a griffin hello <laughs> and I I honestly, that was so out of pocket. I have no idea. I don't even know if he knows what a buffalo is. But he certainly used that, and I thought it was funny. <laughs> yeah. I do like the, the little griffin boy. He says, I'm a, I'm a griffin rider, but says, Yona's the buffalo. And then Yona's like, I'm a yak. I'm not a buffalo. <laughs> <laughs> so. Yeah, I I thought it was pretty good. Uh, prob- honestly, it was not my favorite of the of the stories. I This one felt just kind of confusing for me. Yeah, I would say the 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 previous sound wave would uh, was more fun. The previous sound wave yeah. mini story. I agree. I liked that one a lot better, but I did get at least a little bit of enjoyment out of it. So that's always a plus. Yeah, yeah. There's a little bit of enjoyment in everything, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, so next up, we have the beauty of Cybertron. Ratchet and Rarity are trying to study the Brainwatch Cybertronians in order to find a solution. They end up capturing Knockout and recruiting him to save his best friend, Breakdown. Would you like to take this one? I think you really enjoy it. Knockout! (laughs) (laughs) Oh my god, I saw him and I was like, oh, there he is. The man, the myth, the legend, the bot that everybody has multiple times proved to be the hottest Transformer. <laughs> and I was stoked to see him. I like I like Knockout a lot. And there was, there was a lot about this one that I really enjoyed. I liked getting to see Rarity and Knockout interact because they're both kind of the same character, just slightly different. Uh, and having Ratchet there was also fun because I've always loved the dynamic between Knockout and Ratchet, especially in Transformers Prime. Yeah. I just think, I think it's a fun little... Like, ooh, grumpy guy plus uh, very obviously gay guy who cares more about his finish than saving lives. <laughs> yeah, but they're but they're both the medical professionals. You know, you know. <laughs> but yeah, no, I I really liked this one. I really liked the scene where Knockout was kind of going through the different places on Cybertron. And I, I liked getting to see that in the comic. Getting yeah. to see the different spots of Cybertron. Like, I think there was uh, an Energon Springs or something that was pretty cool. Yep. Yeah. And 
I I gotta say, knockout knockout got real gay at the end there. He got he you know he needed to show friendship and emotion to save his friend, and uh, he didn't have to say it out loud. But Rarity loves that he did. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man, I I really enjoyed that. I'm pretty sure that that they're canonically Conjex and Dura um, at yeah. this point, so they're married. And a uh, god, oh, it was so good. I really liked it. <laughs> yeah, I do like the since Knockout isn't Prime version. Ratchet is more of G1 version, but they still mm-hmm. do a little reference because Knockout steals a contraption from Ratchet, and Ratchet says, "Hey, Knockout, I needed that." So it's yes! a little bit of a nod there, which was pretty fun. Yeah, I really liked that. It was, it was, yeah. th- I think this one honestly might have been probably my favorite out of all of the stories. I liked this one a lot. Yeah, I really liked the the ending. It's very sweet because Knockout, like, Knockout always says that Breakdown is his friend, but I guess he's never really told him uh, why and, and all that. So I really liked him opening up and letting yeah. him know and all that. So I think that was a very uh, nice arc for both of I them, agree. even if it's a, like a small, you know, story. It was lovely. 10 out of 10. <laughs> uh, moving on to our, our next one, which uh, it was pretty pretty heartwarming as well. It's called The Mightiest Dinobot. And Spike and Smolder, which sounds very familiar. Uh, okay. Jumpster. <laughs> Hang out with Dinobots. But Superior attacks, and the only way to defeat it is by being the mightiest little dragon Spike is. This story is very cute. I really like it. Uh, Spike and Grimlock meet up again, and but this time Spike has a friend it's called Smolder, and I really like how the Dinobots are are like he's not they're talking about Spike not being very mighty compared to Smolder, but Grimlock is defending him, so I really really enjoyed that as as Grimlock yes. is like he saved me and he did this and he's so much bigger, but then everybody just didn't quite see it. I felt very bad, but as always, Spike saves the day. Yeah, I I was a sucker for this one in the last in the last issues, and I was sucking for it in this one. I really, really like Spike and Grimlock's friendship. I think it's really cute. And I just, uh, the rest of the Dinobots were there, too, and I really liked it. I really mm-hmm. liked the... Just... There, there was the specific scene with the Dinobots versus Superion as well when they first started the fight that I really liked. The art style was super cool. And I love the fact that Spike swooped in and was like, okay, I have this plan and we're going to do it. Like, he knew how to get in there and what to do. Like, he's obviously been researching these guys for a while, which I thought was adorable. Yeah. <laughs> no, it was great. I, I do like the little reference on Sludge as he gets knocked into Swoop and his yeah, eyes pop out. his eyes did movie. that. Yes. I noticed. <laughs> it was great. It was great. Yeah. And the ending of this one was just, it was so cute. Everybody was like, yeah, Spike, you're an honorary Dinobot now. And we had like the aerial bots in the background with uh, with all the Dinobots. It was so cute. It was so good. <laughs> it's very cute. Spike got the best stories, like the cutest stories. <laughs> yeah, it was it was pure. I loved it. And again, our final story is called the finale. <laughs> uh, the Autobots and the ponies work together with the remaining Decepticons in order to liberate Megatron and their friends from the King Sombra's power. But King Sombras has a secret weapon. Will they win? What do you think? E- no, they're gonna all no. die. <laughs> <laughs> this one was uh, this one was pretty cool. I was enjoying it quite a bit while reading it. There was a lot of really fun interactions throughout it, and um, mm, King Sombranok. <laughs> I was not expecting uh, King Sombranok, but that was that was a cool twist. Yes, uh, for the listeners, Sombra took over the dead body of Scorpionok and was like, "Hey guys, you can call me King Sombranok now." <laughs> yep. Yeah, and it, it's pretty much Scorpionok, but just has a bunch of smoke coming out. <laughs> yeah, he but didn't even cool. look like he'd been beaten up at any point. He just came out as fresh as a baby's butt. Like I. <laughs> Yeah, but it was it was great. I do like seeing Alita One here, uh, and we get to yes. see other uh, other Autobots on the on this issue. I got to uh, see Wheeljack. Yeah, yes, <laughs> Wheeljack is in there, and I I like that the ponies got upgraded. They got some special suits uh, thanks to Ratchet and Wheeljack, and they become weaponizers, and so they can they transform. transform. <laughs> 
<laughs> they transformed into weapons. It was so great. I loved it. Uh, I, at first, when they the, they first came into battle, I'm like, what the heck are they wearing? That was not touched on in the other issues. And then um, they transformed. <laughs> they transformed. <laughs> it, it, was, was it, was, it was pretty good. And this, this one also had some more moments between Starscream and Rainbow Dash being homies. And I really liked it. Yeah, they uh, Starscream has uh, Rainbow Dash uh, kind of like an axe, and they they he tried to save Megatron, but he also had other intentions. <laughs> yeah, he just he really stepped in. Optimus Prime was doing the whole like one shall stand and one shall fall, and then Starscream gets in there and just beats Megatron across the face with like a transformed <laughs> Rainbow Dash, and it was the funniest thing. <laughs> yeah, I do like. That uh, Twilight Sparkles and Pinkie Pie also get their suits uh, with also uh, Fluttershy. But Twilight Sparkles becomes Optimus Prime, a sword for Optimus Prime. And Pinkie Pie becomes the party <laughs> cannon for Megatron, which shoots cupcakes and rubber chickens, which yeah. was hilarious. <laughs> it was pretty good. It was pretty great. Yeah, yeah. I, I like the different choices for the the ponies as to what they turned into. Uh, I think if I remember, Rarity was a shield, which was was pretty great because of her her character and personality, and it just kind of shows the growth that she's had over the years. And I, I liked that Twilight Sparkle was the sword. Rainbow Dash being like a hammer axe thing was pretty great. Yep. It, it just all of them had like a, a smart choices for what they turned into. Yeah. Yeah, it was it was great. And in the end, they defeat King Sombra and they send the ponies back through the space bridge. As Megatron says that uh, Megatron says that Optimus says <laughs> that freedom yeah. is the the right of all sentient beings, and so uh, he allows uh, the ceasefire. It doesn't attack the Autobots, uh, letting everybody go back home. And they talk that in the future they could build bridges. And, you know, do cultural exchange and all that. So that's pretty funny. Uh, but we get a little teaser in the end, which uh, sadly won't get to happen. But we see the Quintessons looking over at uh, Cybertron and what the Cybertronians and ponies are doing. I want to punch the Quintessons in their, like, six different faces. <laughs> there has never been a good Quintesson. Every single one of them, they're like, hey, man, I'm going to do this thing. And the thing sucks. Well, we shall see. We shall see. <laughs> well, we won't be able to see, but maybe it was going to be something good. You Who know? knows? Who knows? Are you ready for a Rod Star rating? Yeah. Uh, why Why don't you start? Out of five Rod Stars, what would you give it? Uh, so this, this, this specific set of comics, these four, were not, to me, were not nearly as fun as the original four. They felt kind of forced to me as and, and rushed, almost. Like, they were trying to get that same energy from the first four, but they just they couldn't quite get there. So there was some stuff in it that just was very confusing, and they kind of jumped around a lot. Like I said earlier, they, it felt kind of rushed. So I would give it a 3 out of 5. I would give it a 2 out of 5, but I really, really liked the the different things that I mentioned throughout this this episode here. Where you know the I love the, the the characters that were added in there. The art style was fun. There was a lot of good moments. So I will give it a three out of five. Yeah, I I agree. I think it's kind of two point five three range. Uh, so I would mm. I would I would give it a three. Uh, it definitely doesn't have the same energy as the first four, which I really enjoyed. And I think it's because they try to make it a little bit serious since it was on the Transformers home planet and. Uh, Compared to the first one where they go to Equestria and it's the the ponies' home planet, mm -hmm. uh, I wish they would have done it uh, again. Mini stories that didn't have a bigger plot. Uh, in this case, they did have King Sombra, so they had to deal with that. But I I I wasn't as laughing as much as I did in the other one and kind of smiling at what was going on in the different jokes with these ones. Yeah, I agree. I also did not get any get any um, tears in my eyes. Like I did from the last one. <laughs> this one did not evict very many emotions from me, to be honest with you. I don't even think it really got an audible laugh out of me. I see. I see. So, yeah, this one's this one. They were fun, but not nearly as good as the originals. I see. 
But listeners, what do you think of these comics? How many rock stars would you give it? Let us know by leaving a comment below. Uh, we do not have any emails today, but if you would like to get in contact with us, you can send us an email at sourcebarpodcast at gmail.com. That is S-W-E-R-V-E-S-B-R podcast at gmail.com. Uh, Lapis, do you have any toys, anything would you like to talk about before we close off the episode? Um, I don't have too much other than the fact that you know, we've got some, some D&D stuff that's coming up. Yeah, we do. Uh, the Alita one-shot is out already. So if you haven't heard that one already, uh, we recommend you go listen to it. We have the lovely Lindsay Rousseau playing Alita 1. And it's a blast. If you really want to have a special one-shot episode where you follow Alita and a random group of bo- bots that don't have anything put together as they're... <laughs> Whoa, as I don't know what you're talking about. Come on now. <laughs> as they explore the the cosmos, then that's a, a good one. And then after that, we will have Eon, season three of the podcast of Transform and Rollout coming out soon. And uh, it will be out a few weeks before for any Patreon member. Yeah, uh, so. Smolder here, I'm going to be, you know, a big part in this. And I, I recommend you go watch it. If you don't, I will. I will find you. Go watch it. Yes. Yes, it's very, very fun. So uh, uh, you should go give it a listen. Absolutely. Uh, I also have some other exciting news. Uh, season four of the podcast will begin in two weeks. Onyx and I, and a possible third host, will be covering the IDW 2019 continuity. Uh, but if you are a Patreon member, you will be able to tune in a week early. So if that's something you would like to do and would like to have access to it, you're welcome to do it. There will be links in the description below. Uh, also, I do have a Twitch where I stream Tuesdays and Thursdays uh, at twitch.tv slash kilobyteprime. And uh, you can catch me hanging out with some friends, playing games, and just having a good time. If that's something you think it would be fun to participate, you're welcome to stop by. And uh, if you've enjoyed this episode, consider sharing it with your friends and subscribing. If you want to help out the show even further, we do have a Patreon. All of the proceeds will go to supporting the show and keeping the lights on. Of course, we have some tiers that offer other forms of gratitude, such as 3D printed files and entry to our Discord channel. You'll even get early access to our comic review videos a week before they are publicly released and our D&D videos. Also, we have a goal to reach 500 subscribers. We'll be holding a brand new kind of giveaway we've never done before, so make sure to click that subscribe button and tell your friends it's a good time. And as always, we hope you're all staying safe out there. Thank you so, so much for listening to All Our One. Till All Our One. Follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and TikTok at Swords Bar Podcast, and even on Tumblr. Yes, with everything going on on Twitter, we figured we should cover our bases. Speaking of which, you can also find us on Twitter at Swords Bar. If that's still a thing, if you're interested in more content, try checking out the spin-off D&D series, Transform and Roll Out. We have some special one-shots available. I check out a preview now for the Alita 1 one-shot. The Prelude to Season 3, Eons. And uh, who might you be? You can call me Alita One. What happened when you left? Uh, he betrayed sort of us, obviously. Thing, I betrayed it? nobody. You left us. You betrayed us left to cons. Yep. Wait, wait, wait. Did he just say... Okay, so she Where's just said you betrayed us, <laughs> and he just said you betrayed the Decepticons. Upon hearing this exchange, Alita One immediately raises her blaster and points it right at Zephyr's head. Whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> Zephyr's the other oh, come one. Come on, what? Looking straight at Zephyr. Hey, whoa, hey. Uh, so, yeah, um, point it at that one. Yeah, I have my right, own plan. I, not at say. Zephyr, I point the we- It was Greece who said that Right. Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> so it was good. Oh, I'm learning names. I'm learning names. So I do not. Alita one does not point the blaster at Zephyr. She points it straight at Greece. Yeah. But it's Perfect. so much funnier at Zephyr. <laughs> it's a little funnier. It's so much better. She looks at you and she's like, "Oh, sorry, not you, the other one." Really? I'm confused with both of you wearing Decepticon badges. They're all small. <laughs> I'm like, all you Decepticons look the same to me. They're all small. I walk up to him. I go, "My lord, I will fight for you." I will die for you. I will do anything for you. And to prove my loyalty, I will give a hug for you. I will pass it you. It's true, he doesn't give hugs very often. Anything I'd laugh for you. <laughs> <laughs>
Wait, so I roll with advantage? Yeah, feel free to roll with advantage. Oh. I'm, I'm a graceful DM sometimes. That's also not going to hit. That's a 12. Okay. No worries. We'll keep with the same thing we made up last time. It's all Grease's fault. Anyway. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> We're 18 points of damage. <laughs> so they're like Wario, but... She's <laughs> <laughs> too <laughs> Wario, wah. That actually kind of sounds <laughs> like Yoshi. <laughs> <laughs> I'm still debating oh. shooting the other two of you. <laughs> <laughs> that is so well, bad. Shoot him first. Don't kill another of my characters, please. Well, that was certainly something. There is also a YouTube channel with bonus content, such as video games containing funny comments and trendy shorts. A link will be provided below. And if you're so inclined, you can support us on Patreon, where you can get even more bonus content, such as reading files, access to their Discord, and listen to the content before it's released to the public. More links will be provided below. Then transmission.